Let me tell you, I've had a hell of a night. I'm happy where I'm at right now, but it's just been a hell of a night. So, you guys will remember the first time I tacked on this jib, the tacks broke. So, I went in for a second time, tried to weld this together. Now, the second time I welded it together, this piece, this two inch piece was off a few thousandths of an inch. So, what was happening when I was trying to swivel this jib extension, this flat was hitting on this other piece of two by two and it was just creating a tremendous amount of friction and there was just no way around it. I had to break it off again. So get this, the third time I welded it, I welded it together. I ta well, I tacked everything together. I tacked everything good and I thought, all right, it'll be good. And I went to test it out with the tacks on there and it was awesome. It was perfect and I got so excited. So I decided to weld everything up firmly do a final pass weld for everything in this knuckle. Well, I forgot that when you apply copious amounts of heat to very tight tolerance parts and you apply that heat rapidly, well, they warp. They change shape slightly. So, I screwed up. I put too much heat on all these parts and what happened is one inch shaft, it was seized in here, in here, and I was able to get the top piece of flat off. So these, the, the, the two inch shaft right there, and this lower flat, I had to take it outside, and I had to torch everything out of there. And I didn't get that on camera because I was just so pissed off, but here's some of the remnants. So, that's why it's good to have a torch around the shop, especially for trying to cut stuff out of like holes like this. See, that's kind of like what, what it looked like. And if you get really good at a torch, you can actually cut out, in focus, you can actually cut out a lot of what's in the center without damaging or marring the receiver to whatever it is you're trying to cut out. So everything worked out well. And I just finished my final welds on this jib. And I think it's just about time to call it a night, even though I really want to keep going, but I better stop now because uh, if I keep going, I'm not going to be able to get up for work tomorrow and uh, something else is bound to go wrong. But let me just show you how, how much weight this thing can kind of support as is. I mean, I'm pretty confident this thing is going to be able to pick up a, a pretty good clip of weight. I was a little bit worried that this 2-inch jib extension was uh, not going to be able to support a lot of weight. I have it clamped down on the bench. So if I go to the end of this, you know, I weigh 160, something like that. And that's, that's solid, man. It's not going anywhere, as every dad says, as he straps something down in the back of his truck. But uh, there's just a little bit of friction. I threw some grease in there, but I, I think it almost might be good to have just a little bit of friction, and this will go away with time as I continue to use this and things wear down a little bit. But that grease is going to help prevent that wear. So, also, what I'm really happy to see is when I go to swivel this over onto the table, you can hear that it just skims the top of the table. So that means that this piece and this piece are pretty much perfectly in plane with one another, which that, that was another thing I was concerned about. So I also have a little pulley welded on there and I just threw a flat washer on the top and lightly tacked that so if I ever need to take that off, that'll come off. Um, as for the collars that are on the flat here and here, I did tighten up those set screws. So what's going to happen is the whole piece of one inch is going to move. It's going to swivel and it's going to swivel in this two inch collar, which is what I want because that's where we have our grease fitting. So this should prevent this from wearing down over time. As long as I grease it, it should at least slow everything down, but yeah, man. I'm wiped out. I got a lot of cleanup to do yet. 
we are at perhaps the most critical point in this build right now, and that would be the welds in between the jib, the articulating jib, and the main mast. So there's two really important things that we need to make sure here. One, we need to make sure that this jib is at a perfect 90 degree angle to that main mast. Reason being, if we don't get that at a perfect 90, what will happen if we get it acute less than 90, uh, when the mast you know, is at a 90 and the jib's out, if we, if we get that as an acute angle, the jib is always gonna be pointed down. As where if we weld that on and it's obtuse over 90 degrees, that jib's gonna be pointed up, which we don't want that. So it's really critical you get a perfect 90 degree uh, placement of those two pieces together when I go to weld that. Now the second critical weld is gonna be that we get a 90 degree angle between the mast and this jib when it's uh, tilted vertical like it is. The reason it's so critical that we need to get a 90 degree uh, angle between that mast and this jib extension is because if we do not, what will happen uh, when the jib, so, uh, imagine my fingers are kind of like the jib extension, what will happen if we don't get that at a 90 degrees angle to that mast right now, when I go to swing the jib, it may go down as we go to the left side or it may go up on the left side and it may go down on the right side or up on the right side. So, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but it makes sense in my mind. Really critical that we get that at a perfect 90 degree angle to the mast. Now my welding table is not perfectly level. So, how do you make sure that this is 90 degrees to this? Well, you get one of these, I don't even know what this is called. This is like a, it's like a magnetic angle checker, I guess you'd call it. You know, if you have any shavings on the bottom, make sure you clean that off. So if I take a look at it right now, That needle is just a little bit to the right of that 90. So when I go to put this on the main mast, we should be just a little bit to the right of zero degrees. And we are just a little bit to the right of zero degrees. It's really starting to come together now. I'm really happy and excited with how this thing's turning out. So what I've been doing for these welds, this has been working out really well. What I'll do, I'll just kind of do a pass. I'll set the magnet over it, let it cool down for five, 10 minutes, and then I'll do another pass. So I uh, still have to do the bottom and the underside yet. But I'm getting ready to weld on the bracing for the jib. And now you guys can kind of, well, you guys can kind of see how this is all coming together. And it's, oh, it is looking pretty darn badass if I do say so myself. So what's going to happen, this is going to be welded onto this piece of two inch. This is like inch and a half or whatever this is. This is a little bit smaller than two inch, but I have it. So I might as well use it or it's just fine for this. So I'm going to weld this on the bottom here. It's going to be parallel to the mast. It's going to get welded onto either side of my bearing roller device, which I spent a lot of time building and creating, which came out pretty darn perfect. So weld here, weld here, and I'm going to have to cut this. I'm going to have to figure out whatever angle that is. So this, this is going to be a brace that goes up to right before the knuckle. I'm thinking somewhere in there and that's going to be a long kind of crappy cut to make. I'm going to have to do both these cuts with an angle grinder probably. Well good day tubes. You're watching the old soul millennial show on the YouTube TV.
Name that YouTuber. Let me know if you can name him down in the comment section. But uh, today, I don't really feel like working on this thing. But we have some extremely cold weather coming in this weekend. And I would like to try and finish this project up. And I would actually like to try and use it before a snowstorm that's supposed to be coming through on Monday. So I'm going to try and get this thing mounted tonight. I have four and a half hours to get it done. Will I get it done? I don't know. So we need to add a little piece right here. Use some type of plate or square stock to extend down to here. Gonna make a mount for the winch. We'll have to add our pulleys, get the trailer level, take this pole out, weld it onto the trailer, make sure it's perfectly plumb, and then uh, we'll see if we have time to brace it up. But first things first, let's get working on the winch. All right, we're at the point in the project where it's kind of like, let's just get this freaking thing done. But, you know, try not to skip out on quality of the build. But I have, uh, I have everything pretty much figured out and all tacked up. I, I, I'm low on my shielding gas, so I got to be careful about uh, how much I use of that tank because I'd really like to finish this up tonight. But with this winch, it only mounts on with two 5 sixteenths inch bolts. One here, one here. So I took this piece of flat, I don't know, maybe that's quarter inch. Drilled two holes so the winch is going to sit here. I have a pulley here, which it's it's tacked on there, but I think that's a, that, that really should be sufficient because the force exerted on this pulley is really going to be that way. And I have this little block right here to really prevent it from kicking out, so that should be fine there. Yeah. Here's a wraparound pulley, and finally, the hook pulley. And uh, same idea here, the force that's really going to be exerted on this pulley is in this direction, so we have a little block right here to prevent that from kicking out. And the thing I like about using these Harbor Freight pulleys is, you know, I think you guys saw earlier in the video that these hooks, right, these hooks used to be on here. But if you take these off and you plan to do a little crane project like this, these are perfect because when you free spool the cable, you don't have to worry about the cable jumping off your pulley. So these actually uh, worked out quite perfectly for that application. This really still needs a D-ring. I'm not going to do that uh, at this point in time. I'm just going to try and get this sucker mounted. So uh, one thing that I do have to be cognizant of is making sure that I have enough clearance for this puppy to pull in the garage because I'd really like this be to be able to be towed by the lawnmower and then pulled directly in the garage if I wanted to. So I took my tape measure and I measured the maximum height, maximum clearance rather, of my garage is 81 inches. Now I have the trailer sitting level on the ground right now and two from the ground up to where that plate sits on the trailer, we have 13 and a half inches. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to figure out how much of this pipe I'm gonna have to cut off. It's really what this is all about. So if we take our maximum clearance of 81 inches and subtract 13 and a half, which is where the trailer sits, that should give us the total length of this, uh, this crane that we can have mounted on top of the plate. So that gives us 67.5, right, 67.5. So the height of the crane as it sits is 71 inches. So we take that 71 inches, subtract 67.5, and we get 3.5 inches. So I'm going to have to take off 3.5 inches, which isn't the end of the world. You know, of course, I'd like this thing to be as tall as possible, but also you got to remember that the taller we make this thing, the more potential there is for this puppy to become unstable. So what I need to do now is I need to try and twist off this shaft, pull this off, and then we'll get that sitting on the plate over there. And really I do also need to cut that bar at some point, but I think I'm gonna leave it on there for now. Uh, who knows, I, I just wanna make sure that that jib extension is stable enough before I do anything with that bar. So that's my plan. It's going to be tough trying to pull this mast out of here with me uh, just being in here by myself. So let me set the camera up for this one.
this. Oh yeah. There she goes. Oh yeah, she's going now. A little more tension. There she goes. Haha. I don't think getting it back on will be much of a problem. Well, I mean, it's it's not going to be fun, but if I have trouble popping it off, I figure I could hit it with a sledgehammer probably right here just to tap. Well, I can't hit it with a sledgehammer. I could hit it with probably two pound with my right hand, but. The biggest thing you want to avoid in a situation like this is pounding on the shaft. Because if you pound on that shaft, it's going to mushroom out and then it's just going to get more locked in there. Maybe what I'll do before I put that back on, I'll take some sandpaper and run it around there and try and shave it down like, I don't know, a third of a thou. Yeah, that's probably a smart move because I would like to be able to take this off if I ever needed to in the future. So, uh, yeah. Alright, I have the trailer sitting as level as possible, which this to be honest, you know, this is, this was a cheaply made trailer, so when I look down the rails, I see that they, they kind of curve down, that side's a little bit worse, but this plate is as level as possible, and everything else is as level as possible as I'm going to get it. I have a little bit of wood under that right side tire, because the concrete slab slopes down that way a little bit, but aside from that, I've marked out Approximately the center. I actually took the end of that pipe that I cut off and I put it kind of where I wanted it. Now this this got me thinking a little bit. Like the crane's gonna have no problem picking up weight uh, parallel, long ways to the trailer. But if it swings that horizontally, you know, thinking about it now, I'm a little bit concerned that not going to be strong enough to take that that side load but then I got to thinking I am going to brace this up you know this is just going to be the base but I'm also going to have stabilizing pieces to the boom probably going here here and maybe a forward one tying down right behind the hitch not not sure on that one yet uh, don't really know if it's going to need it but I think we're ready to go. I mean, it's just got to be welded on. I've got to try and make sure that it's uh, as straight as possible. And this is going to be a tricky son of a gun to get right. Okay. Oh, wait. 